Hello, my name is Greg Renner. I'm from Columbia, Missouri. I'm a surgeon at the University of Missouri School of Medicine, and one of my hobbies now is collecting duck decoys. One of the major focuses of my collecting has been decoys made in the state of Missouri. There's really not a lot of individual carvers. There are several examples, but Missouri is known mostly for its factory decoys. There were three factories in the Jefferson City, Missouri area between 1920 and 1945. The Hayes Wood Products Company, the Gundelfinger Wood Products Company, and then the Benz Wood Products Company. And that's where a major part of my focus has been to learn more about these particular companies and the products they made. So Greg, uh, you mentioned these uh, three factory decoy makers. Uh, are there distinguishing features? There's several. The, the Hayes Company, which was the first, uh, tried to make decoys that mirrored or reflected the uh, Mason Decoy Company at the time. They made a so-called high-end Grand Prix decoy, which was very similar to the Mason Premier. And then they made a superior grade decoy that was similar to the Mason Standard Glass Eye decoy. And, um, there was a little change over time as the company changed ownership midway between 1920 and 1924. But the uh, decoys, to my mind, are quite fascinating, and the overlap with the Masons can be very hard to discern sometimes. So I, I see you brought some examples of decoys with you. Uh, can you point out some of those uh, features that you were? I don't have an example of a Hayes decoy here. Um, what I do have are three decoys that are made by the Benz Wood Products Company. Uh, they're identified by a special uh, decal on the bottom that's, if you find that, that's a good thing because those things wear away so easily. There's not many of them still bear that. But that, So is that an ink stamp? Basically? It's not an ink. This is a decal. It's a decal. Okay. But it proves who the maker was because the Gundelfinger equipment was bought from the Hayes Company and then it was transferred to the Benz Company so the same lathes were used through all three companies. Yep. So the, during the transition from one company to the other the decoys made were very similar making it much more difficult to discern who really made this decoy. In this case having the cow on this duck and on this duck that tells me that these were clearly made by Benz. But the Jefferson City companies did one thing which was very unique. Uh, they really were pioneers in the idea of scratch painting. They would put a base paint on and put a darker overpaint and then come in with little combs or other instruments and scratch through the second coat of paint to make this look like feathering. There's feathers shown on this female. In a wing outline on this male, there's just kind of a cross back effect to make it look more like feathers and not a shiny duck decoy. And it's quite interesting to see how that changes over time. This is another Benz, I believe. Uh, there it could be a gundle finger. It has more of a gundle finger character to the paint, a heavier paint. The problem with gundle finger paint is that it's very heavy and it's prone to chipping. If I was to drop this, it'd be likely a piece would chip off. And so they maybe weren't so durable. They were very nice, but not so durable. In a later phase, Gundelfinger went to a rougher design. They didn't sand the decoy quite as much to make it even look more feathered. Also, it reduced some of their production cost. Um, in an earlier time, they would take the Grand Prix ducks and cut the decoy, or even what was made, it was made as two halves, and it would be hollowed inside. The superior models were solid. The Grand Prix models were hollowed. In the later phase of the Gundelfinger, they actually went to a circular drilled uh, hollowing and then a plugging to the breast, which really? is only seen in the very end of the Gundelfinger production. Wow, that's incredible. So if someone was interested in learning more about Missouri decoys, are there some resources that they could go and, and uh, take a look at? There are some. It's somewhat limited. I think the best uh, thing, at least to me personally, was uh, Ken Traer's book on factory decoys of North America. that. Uh, gave a lot of good information on all three of the factories. I think it's not perfect. There are some illustrations that are questioned again because there's such a controversy about what was a late phase Mason and what was a Jefferson City decoy. And I don't think there's any book out there that doesn't have some questionable illustrations at the present time. That's a debated point. I don't know that we'll ever have an absolute answer on that, but, but the information in general is very good. Uh, there was a man, uh, James Goodrich, 
He was the former director of the Missouri State Historical Society. He published two articles, one in Missouri Conservationist, I can't remember the year, that talked about factory decoys, and it was specific to the Jefferson City factories. And then a year later, in a journal called uh, Decoy Hunter, he did another article on the same thing. Ken Traer did a very good article also in Decoy Magazine some years ago, and again, gave a, a good overview of all three companies. Those are the best information out there at the present time, as much as I know. Uh, so someone was uh, walking through a yard sale or a flea market, and they saw a, a bird. Uh, are there some uh, things about it that uh, could tip them off that it might be a Missouri bird? There are certain traits that are very characteristic of what I call the classic of each of these companies. The Hayes probably had a little more variation. An early Hayes duck, Grand Prix will have a little notching above the bill. Uh, the paint again will be similar to what you might find in a premier grade mason. The superior grade will have a strong posterior curvature to the head, it almost looks like Woody Woodpecker. And the bill comes out and then kicks up. And so in those two traits, I call it the Woody Woodpecker bill, or head, and that's very classic of the first generation of Hayes decoys. Later on, that changed as Standard Crate bought the company and continued the line, but that's a little harder to describe. And the Gundelfinger bird, this is not a Gundelfinger, but you see much more, especially in the hen, scratch painting. There's feathers that are scratched. In other cases, there'll be crossbody comb painting, but those are real strong in the Gundelfinger line. The classic Gundelfinger duck has a sort of flat bill, just a very flat bill. Uh, in its later production, it had one that looked exactly like this, it's a more perky head, a little smaller bird. Once you get used to seeing them, you know, that it, the technique of painting is what makes them stand out. The Benz also uh, has real classic, I don't have what I consider the classic Benz decoy. They have a three-part speculum. There's like three parts, very, most of them are blue, some can be green with a little white outline, but there's three parts instead of this triangular or rectangular speculum. It's, once you see it, there's no mistaking it, it's, it's the Benz. They also have a very elongated bill. Uh, they can be mistaken for a um, Poitavin uh, or a so-called singing river decoy. They had decoys that were similar but different. And uh, they also, again, had this cross-body comb painting in the drakes, which is classic. Thanks, Greg. We appreciate you taking the time to share what you, uh, what you know about Missouri decoys and uh, look forward to lots of folks getting uh, interested in, in, Missouri, uh, in Missouri birds. Thank you. Thank you.